Okay, complications of labor and delivery. I'm going to talk about a couple different things here. Number one, we're going to talk about some of the complications. We're going to talk about um, the role of pain medication in labor and delivery, and we're going to look at some good and bad signs of um, fetal heart rate, and then we're going to look at the tiebreaker. Now, for complications, there's like 15 or 20 different uh, problems that you might see that they ask you about, but there's really only three different interventions that you're going to do. Okay, so we're going to go through these. Um, number one is painful back labor. Okay, uh, for painful back labor, you're going to want to position the client knee to chest. Okay, knee to chest position, basically the doggy style position. Okay, now the other thing that you're going to want to do then is apply a little bit of pressure to the client's sacrum. Okay, so for painful back labor, you'll position them knee to chest and apply some pressure to their sacrum, okay? And this is not an emergency, okay? Painful back labor is not an emergency. So it's uncomfortable, it's painful, it's not fun, but it's not a medical emergency. Now, the second thing that can happen is a prolapsed cord, okay? That is an emergency, okay? It requires immediate intervention and action. So what you're going to do is push on the presenting part of the body to uh, relieve pressure on the cord, so you're going to want to push on the presenting part. It's the first thing you're going to do for that prolapsed cord. Right? You want to take the pressure off of it. Because remember, if there's pressure on that cord, it's basically restricting the blood flow to the fetus. Okay, And then you are going to want to position the mother with her hips above her shoulders. So you're going to want to adjust the um, incline of the bed so that her hips are above her shoulders, which is going to... Um, you know, obviously have the baby go in the using gravity in the opposite direction of the delivery, which is going to help slow it down and re hopefully remove some of that pressure on the presenting part and of the cord. Okay, so that is an emergency. Painful back labor, not an emergency. Prolapsed cord is an emergency. Now, all the other complications, the other 15 or 20, there's you can basically follow the rule of lion, right? And you heard a lion pit. Okay, so pit doesn't always apply because not every client's getting pit unless it says they are. So we'll go with the rule of lion, all right, for all other complications. And for all other complications, you know, anything other than painful back labor or a prolapsed cord, you're going to position the client on their left side. Okay, that's the L in lion. Left side, I is for IV. So you're going to increase the IV rate, all right, and... O stands for oxygenate, so you're going to oxygenate her, and you're going to give her high flow oxygen on it with a mask, so like 7, 8, 9, 10 liters, okay, so it's um, 8 to 10 liters, say, um, via mask, okay, nasal cannula is not going to cut it, and then you're going to want to notify the doctor, that's lion, left side, increase IV, oxygenate via mask, and is notified the MD, and the pit, the pit stands for Pitocin, and that should be stopped, um, if it's running. So that's the first thing that you should do is stop the Pitocin. But unless it says you're getting Pitocin, then, you know, you're not going to be able to stop it if it's not one of your options. should make common sense. So those are the complications that you may see. So again, there's three things you're going to want to do. If it's painful back labor, just get them on their hands and knees in that knee chest position and put some pressure on their sacrum. Not an emergency. That's one thing that might happen. If the second thing happens is a prolapsed cord, put pressure on the presenting part to take that pressure off the cord, and you're going to position the mother with her hips above her shoulders. Okay, that is an emergency. Those are the two things that should stand out to you. Anything else that you hear about, go with Lion. Okay, left side, increase IV, oxygenate, or notify the doctor. For pain medications in labor and delivery, it's important to remember that when you're giving medications to the mother during pregnancy, before the baby is born, before that cord is cut, anything you give to the mother is going in the baby. So now as a nurse, you're going to want to question and then not administer a systemic pain medication if the baby is likely to be born when that medicine is peaking. Okay, So if that medicine is going to peak at the time of the baby's birth, you are going to want to question that order, okay? And you're going to not want to give it, okay, because of the risk of respiratory depression in that neonate, okay? So question and not administer a systemic pain medication if the baby's likely to be born when the medication is peaking, okay? So 
Uh, make sure you listen to the section on um, pharmacology tips and tricks to make sure that you understand when different drugs and different medications peak based on their route um, so that you know if that baby's likely to be born while that drug is peaking. So now we have some fetal heart rates that we need to understand. Okay, so you have fetal heart rate, you have the variability, and then decelerations. Okay, those are the three things that you're going to want to be monitoring on that baby. So for a low fetal heart rate, that's bad. Okay, and in that center column there, write the words under 110 beats per minute. Okay, so low fetal heart rate is bad under 110 beats. So what are we going to do for that? And it goes in the right-hand column is lion. Okay, a high fetal heart rate is over 160. For that, you're just going to write down what you found. You're going to record your findings. Okay, so for fetal heart rate, if it's low, that's bad. If it's under 110, and for that, you're going to do lion. So left side position, increase IV, oxygenate, uh, notify the doctor. Okay, if it's high. Over 160, just record the findings. So now let's look at variability. Low baseline variability, if it is present, is bad. Okay, that's what goes in the center column. And on that right-hand column, for low baseline variability, if present, is lion. Okay. High baseline variability, if present, you're going to record the findings. Late decelerations... Okay, are bad if present. And in the right-hand column there, again, you're going to write lion because that's what you're going to do for late decelerations. Early decelerations right, represent some head compression that's going on. So early decelerations, if present, if present goes in the center column, and then write record findings in the right-hand column. So that's what you're going to do. Variable decelerations are very bad. Variable, vary, okay? Variable decelerations are very bad if present. It means the cord is compressed. Okay. So you're going to want to push on the presenting part um, and reposition to hopefully alleviate the compression on the cord. Okay. So now look down this table. Okay. For heart rate, if it's low, you're going to do lion. If the variability is low, you're going to do lion. If the decelerations are late, you're going to do lion. Okay, so you got low, low, and late. They all start with L's. So if it starts with an L, you're going to do a lion. Okay, if it's high or early, you're just going to record the findings. And if it's variable, remember it starts with a V, very. Variable is very bad. Okay, so that represents core compression. You're going to push on the presenting part if possible, or you're going to want to reposition the mother. Last thing you need to remember about this is the tiebreaker, which is whenever you're in doubt, okay, and you're at a point where you need to guess or you're debating something, you need to check the fetal heart rate. And you're always going to go with that. It's hard to beat that one as a tiebreaker because when are you going to say that it's okay to just not assess the fetal heart rate? Okay. Like, I can't think of a situation where I'm okay not assessing the fetal heart rate. That is not okay. Right? It's not okay to not assess the fetal heart rate. So that's pretty much always the tiebreaker answer. Nothing's really able to trump that um, because assessing the fetal heart rate is um, the most essential thing that you're going to be want to, want to be doing in monitoring that fetus. Okay. So those are some of the complications and considerations that you're going to want to make when assessing the fetus. Um, and complications during labor and delivery. Um, remember, if it starts with low, so low fetal heart rate, low baseline variability, or low late decelerations, starts with an L, you're going to do lion. Okay. If it's early, you're just going to record it, or if it's high, you're just going to record it. If it's variable, it's very bad. Variables are very bad. Okay. Cord compression, which basically means the fetus is becoming hypoxic. Right? That's why you're getting those variable decelerations. So that's the essence of what you need to know for the NCLEX for labor and delivery complications. This is the stuff that pretty much all new graduate nurses know. It's the interventions for when bad stuff's going on, and uh, this is what you need to know.